white Americans. No need to flee for the exits. That's what the show is for. By the way, I just flew in from Paris. It was delicious. Do you like my, do you like my toothpick? It's great to be here in Chopard. I really love this town and look forward to stomping it out someday. But first, prepare yourselves for a memorable journey to 19th century Japan, where the sake is cheap and the jokes are even cheaper. <laughs> like this one, what do you get when you cross a Japanese dish with a celebrity financial advisor? What? Sushi ramen! <laughs> Seriously, ladies and germs, enjoy the show. I'd love to stay and watch it myself, but Gilbert and Sullivan don't agree with me. At least they didn't when I ate them. <laughs> so without further ado, sit back, chillax, enjoy a fun-filled evening with the Mikado. Hey, maestro! <laughs>
With the Yogi Po and the Rock Hero, hurrah for the homeward bound! 
patches of ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby. I was a member of the Titi Poo Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. While discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. We loved each other at once, but she was betrothed to her guardian, Coco, the cheap tailor. And I saw that my suit was hopeless. <laughs> uh, overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town, so to my delight, when I heard that, a month ago, Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once, in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. Ah, it is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner, under these remarkable circumstances. <laughs> Great Vicardo, virtuous man, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might best be steady. So he decreed in words to sing that all who flirt in the nor wind, unless canoe be ali, should fought with be beheaded, 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 it should fought with be beheaded. I expect you'll all agree that he was right to so decree. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right as right can be. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right as right as right can be. And all is right as right can be. Coco, the cheap tailor, 
Lord High Executioner of Japan? <laughs> Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado see no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence has rolled the two offices into one. And every judge is now his own executioner. But uh, how good of you, for I see you are a man of highest rank, to, to condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You'll understand when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal primordial atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering. <laughs> but I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually when all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor. Did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And salaries attached to them? Or you did? It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Vacounts, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Titipu, and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one. And that is salary. A poobah paid for his services? I, a salaried minion? But I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. <laughs> and it, it does you credit. I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshment from any hands, however lowly. And I retail state secrets at a very low figure. For instance, any further information about Yum Yum would fall under the head of a state secret. <laughs> Another insult, and I think a light one. <laughs> Oh, no, no. 
to duty, I shall ensure a continuance of those favours, which it will ever be my study to deserve. If I am ever called upon to act professionally, I should like to think I will find no difficulty in finding a person whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. 
It may happen that the victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground, who never would be missed, who never would be missed. There's the prevalent nuisance who write for autographs, or people who have flabby hands and irritating laughs, and children who are up and dead to blow you with the flat, or persons who in shaking hands shake hands with you like that, and all this person who wants more than death and insist. None of them be missed. They none of them be missed. He's got some on the list. He's got some on the list. And the none of them be missed. Well, none of them be missed. And that nice surprise who since you just now is rather right. The judicial humorist, I've got him on the list. All funny fellows, comic men, and clowns of private life. Who never would be missed. Who never would be missed. There's the apologetic statesman of a compromising kind. So just what do you call them? Think and bother. Likewise, never mind. Of oh, tip, 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 and what's his name? And also you know who. The task of filling up the blanks I'd rather leave to you. But it really doesn't matter who you put up on the list. For none of them be missed. For none of them be missed. You may put some on the list. You may put some on the list. And the none of them be missed. Well, none of them be missed. <laughs> There's the English oil conglomerate whose offshore well is cracked. I have them on the list. Oh, yes, they're on the list. The Wall Street bankers who cry poor with bonuses intact. Who never would be missed. Who never would be missed. There's the phony metal merchant advertising cash for gold. That writing drunk celebrity and others of his foe. And throw in the Chicago cops who can't hit, catch, or pitch. The driver who is texting with his car half in the ditch. And Illinois, you'll thank me. I've got Rob LaCoy of it. <laughs> For none of them be missed. For none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. For they really make him pissed. And a lot of them be missed. Well done. connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. I should like to do it handsomely, and I want to consult you as to the amount I have to spend upon them. Certainly. In which of my capacities, as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chamberlain, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Attorney General, Privy Purse, or Private <laughs> Secretary? Suppose we say private secretary. Speaking as your private secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself to it well. Exactly. As the city will have to pay for it. That is your advice. As private secretary, of course you will understand that as chancellor of the exchequer, I am bound to see that your economy is observed. Uh, oh, but you just said don't stint yourself to it well. As private secretary. And now you say due economy must be observed? As Chancellor of the Exchequer. I see. Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> now, as my solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with this difficulty? Yes. As your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying, chance it. Thank you. I will. If it were not that, as Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. I see. Come over here, where the Chief Justice can't hear us. <laughs> now, as First Lord of the Treasury, 
Of course, as first Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. Okay, if so it were not that, as leader of the opposition, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. So when you... Or as paymaster general, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. <laughs> But then, as Archbishop of Tidipu, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as first conditioner of police. Isn't he something? In the second act, he sings a whole quartet all by himself. That is extremely awkward. Well, I didn't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be squared. But it's only right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless insulted with a very considerable pride. The matter will have my careful consideration. Oh, for my bride and her sister's approach. Any little compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in a Japanese characteristic attitude, would be most esteemed a favor. No money, no grovel. Three little maids from school. 
I'm not going to kiss you after them. It seems odd, doesn't it? It's rather peculiar. Oh, I expect it's all right. Must have a beginning, you know. Well, of course, I know nothing of these things, but I've no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual. Eh, Lord Chamberlain? I have nearly done. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Thank goodness that's over. <laughs> Why, that's never you. misfortune of loving your wars, yum yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. <laughs> anger? Not a bit, my boy. Why, <laughs> I love her myself. Taking little thing really all together. Nice eyes, pretty hair. <sighs> very glad to hear my opinion backed by commented authority. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. Take him away. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but what is this? Customer come to try on? That is a tremendous swell. It's alive! <laughs> go away, little girls. Can't talk to little girls like you. Go away, those girls. Allow me to present you, Pooba. These are my three wards. The one in the middle is my bride elect. Well, what do you want me to do to them? Mind, I will not kiss them. No, you shan't kiss them. A, a mere bow. You needn't mean it, you know. It goes against the grain. You see, they are not young ladies, they are young persons. Come, come now. There's a good nobleman. Well, I shan't mean it. How do you do, little girls? How do you do? Oh, my pretty class ancestor! No, that was very good! I see nothing to laugh at! It's very painful for me to have to say, how do you do, little girls? How do you do? To young persons. I'm not in the habit of saying, how do you do, little girls? How do you do? To anyone under the rank of a stockbroker. <laughs> oh, don't laugh at him. He can't help it. He's under treatment for it. <laughs> There, there. They don't understand the delicacy of your position. We know how delicate it is, don't we? I should think we do. How a man of your importance can do it all is a thing I never can, never shall understand. <laughs>
to wait for three weeks in the hope that your guardian was to be beheaded. But now I see you are to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Modified rapture. But you do not refuse him. What good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls do not reach an age of discretion until they are 50. True. From 17 to 49, I'll consider years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of a lord by executioner. But... Shall I tell her? <laughs> yes! She will not betray me. What if I should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There, I was certain of it. Directly I heard you play. What if... <laughs> What if I should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty, the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is your highness in disguise? And what has your highness done? And does your highness promise never to do it again? <laughs> Some years ago, I had the misfortune of captivating Katisha, an elderly woman of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection, and ordered me to marry her under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junus Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her at once, or perish ignominiously by the scaffold. So, the night I fled his court, and, assuming the disguise of a second trombone, <laughs> I joined the band in which you found me, and I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please. I think your highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we are quite alone and nobody can see us. Still, that don't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Deuce take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. <laughs> if it were not for the law, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should be sitting side by side. Like that. <laughs> Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off. Like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Breathing sighs of unutterable love. <sighs> like that. With our arms around each other's waists. <laughs> like that. If it weren't for the law. If it weren't for the law. As it is, of course, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. <laughs> Being engaged to Coco. Being engaged to Coco. <laughs> Were you not to Coco blighted, I would say in tender tone, loved one let us be united, let us be each other's own. I would merge all rank and station Were these snares are not to us And to mark my admiration I would kiss you fondly that I would kiss you But as I engaged to go to embrace you, thus Coco would distinctly be your Togo, and for yeah, I should get Togo. Togo, 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 Togo. 
So despite the bold impression Such a thing I've got these girls And the no consideration Will I kiss you about In the box Will I kiss you fondly Yes Let me make it clear to you This is what I'll never do This all this Soliloquizing, you have interrupted an apostrophe, sir. I am a bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. Mikado? What could he have to say to me? <laughs> oh dear, I thought this day would come sooner or later. It seems the Mikado was struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in the town of Titipu for a year, and decrees that unless someone is beheaded within a month, the post of the Lord High Executioner shall be abolished, and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes, there's no hope for it. I should have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you talking about? I can't execute myself. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, because the self-decapitation is an extremely difficult, not to mention dangerous thing to attempt. And secondly, it's suicide. And suicide is a capital offense. That is so, no doubt. We may reserve that point. It could be argued six months hence before the full court. Oh, yes, 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 <laughs> Besides, I don't see how a man could cut off his own head. A man might try. <laughs> Even if you only succeeded in cutting it half off, that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the imperial will. No, pardon me, but there I am adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake, and I cannot consent to embark on a professional operation unless I see my way to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is great itself in comparison with a man engaged in cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can find a substitute... Oh, a substitute! Nothing easier! <laughs> Puma! I now appoint you Lord High Substitute. <laughs> I should be delighted. Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. <laughs> 
I am so proud, if I allowed my family pride to be my guide, I'd volunteer to quit this year instead of you in a minute or two. But family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My primitives with any skinful good and new for titty poo for titty poo. But if I bring the benefit, then I defuse the tower rooms. Now every mansion egg is plan and plot and plan as fast he can. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are caught and two can hardly feel the face of steel and so are slain, are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your courage through to bid us adieu. I am so proud of this I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are caught and two can hardly feel the face of steel and so are slain, are slain without much pain. And so, although I'm ready to go, yet recollect with disrespect did I neglect to thus effected pay and direct. So I object. And so, although I wish to go and great me pine to bread and shine and take the line of a hero pine with grief condign, I must decline. And go and show both friend and foe how much you care. I'm quite aware it's your affair, yet I declare I think your share, but I don't much care. I must so I object your share, but I don't. So I object your share, but I don't. So I object your share, but I don't. So I object, so I object, I don't object. To sit in silent silence in a dark, dark, dark. In a pistol that you're busy with a life long knock Awaiting the sensation of a short, short shock From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block Who sit in silent silence in a dark, dark, dark In a pistol that you're busy with a life long knock Awaiting the sensation of a short, short shock From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block A dark, 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 a life long block A short, short shock, a big black block Who sit in silent silence in a pistol that you're busy with a life long block moment and now required to die within a month and by a man whom I loaded with honors. Is this public gratitude? Is it? How dare you? Am I never allowed to soliloquize? <laughs> Go on. Don't mind me. Well, what are you going to do with that rope? I'm about to terminate an unendurable existence. Terminate your existence? Nonsense. What for? Because you're about to marry the girl that I adore. <coughs> Nonsense, sir. I am a humane man, and if you attempt to do anything of the kind, I shall order your instant arrest. Now come, sir, desist at once, or I summon you. My girl.
That's absurd. You attempted to raise an alarm. I performed the happy dispatch with this dagger. No, no, just... <laughs> Why, you cold-blooded scoundrel, are you aware that in taking your own life, you are committing a crime in which, in which... <laughs> oh, <laughs> substitute. What's the matter? Are you absolutely certain your resolve to die? Absolutely. Nothing will shake your resolution? No, nothing. Threats, treaties, prayers, all useless. All. My mind is made up. Then, if you really mean what you say, and you are absolutely resolved to die, and nothing whatsoever will shake your resolution, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely by the hands of the public executioner. <laughs> well, I, I really don't see how that would benefit me. You don't? <sighs> Observe. You'll have a month to live, and you'll live like a fighting cock at my expense. When the time comes, there'll be grand processions. You will be the central figure. No one will deprive you of that distinction. When the time comes, there'll be bands, dead march, bells tolling, girls and tears, yum yum distracted. And then, when it's all over, general rejoicings. A grand display of fireworks in the evening sky. Well, you won't see them, but they'll be there all the same. <laughs> you really think Yam Yam would be distracted by my death? I'm convinced of it. Bless you, she's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. I should be sorry to cause her pain. But perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and, and travel in Europe <laughs> for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. Uh, oh, no, I don't think you could forget Yum Yum so easily. I mean, after all, what's more miserable than a love blighted life? True. I mean, life without Yum Yum, it seems absurd. And yet, there are a good many people in the world who have to do without it. Poor devils, yes. You are quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number, noble fellow. I'll tell you how we'll do it. You let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month, you may behead me. No, I draw the line at Yum Yum. Very good. You can draw the line, so can I. <sighs> Listen, let's be reasonable. How can I consent to you marrying Yum Yum? If I'm going to marry her myself. My good fellow, she'll be a widow in a month. You can marry her then. <laughs> yes, that's quite true. Oh, but my position during the next month will be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. <laughs> Not half as unpleasant as my position at the end of it. <laughs> yes, that's also quite true. I agree. After all, it's only putting off a wedding for a month. But you won't prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I've educated her to be my wife. I've taught her to regard me as a wise and noble man. You will not change your point of view on that, will you? Uh, trust me. She shall never learn the truth from me. <laughs>
ask you what you mean to do with punctually up here. Congratulate me, gentlemen, I found a volunteer. The Japanese equivalent for me. Now I adore that girl with passion tender And could not yield her with a ready will Or her a lot If I did not adore myself With passion tender still With passion tender still I yes, he loves himself With passion tender still Take her, she's yours. Oh. Oops. <laughs>
this Japanese way, how it is that I am so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> Can this be vanity? <coughs> no. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. <laughs> to be depressed by this sort of thing. A month? What's a month? Why, these divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular oppression to that effect. <laughs> then we'll efface it. We'll call each second an hour, each hour a day, each day a week, and each week a year. At that rate, we've at least 30 years of married happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. Yes, how time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's be perfectly happy. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, by all means. 
all means, let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's absurd to cry. Quite ridiculous. <laughs> Stressing you. Uh, no, no. I must get used to it. Only please, do it by degrees. Begin by placing your arm around her waist. There. Must get used to that first. Oh, wouldn't you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. Mm. No, no. I must learn to bear it. Please. Oblige me by placing your head on his shoulders. Like that? I'm very much obliged. <laughs> now, kiss her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is simply torture! Oh, come, come, Vera. After all, it's only for a month. 
No, it's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What, what do you mean? My child, my poor child, how shall I break it to her? My bride that was to have been. Was to have been? Yes, it seems that you can never be mine. Oh, that's so wonderful. wonderful. Let's get married right, right away. away. <laughs> I've just ascertained <laughs> that by McConnell's law, when a married man is to be beheaded, his wife is burning alive. Barry's alive? Barry's alive. alive. <laughs> it's a most unpleasant death. Y yes, but who put you up to this? Oh, Puma! He's my solicitor. But he may be mistaken. So I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, Master of the Rose, the Judge Ordinary, and Chief Commissioner of Police. All had the same opinion on the matter. <laughs> Never knew such unanimity on the point of law in my life. <laughs> but, but stop a bit. This law has never been put into force. Not yet. You see, flirting is only a crime punishable with decapitation. And married men never flirt. <laughs> <laughs> of course they don't. Well, I quite forgot about that. Seems that my age of happiness is now at an end. Darling, I don't wish to appear selfish, and I love you with all my heart. I don't believe I shall ever love anybody else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my love, I had no idea, pet, that I should have to be buried alive in a month. Yes, this, this is the first I've heard of it. <laughs> It makes a difference, doesn't it? It, it does make a difference, doesn't it? You see, burial alive, it's such a stuffy death. Well, I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I release, if I, well, if I keep it to, to your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. But if I release you, you marry Coco at once. Here's a howdy do, if I marry you. When your time has come to perish, then the maiden whom you cherish must be slaughtered too. Here's a howdy do, here's a howdy do. Here's a pretty mess, in a month or less. I must die without a wedding, let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess, here's a pretty mess. Here's a state of pain, to her life she plays. Matrimony of devotion doesn't seem to suit the notion very real it brings. Here's a state of things, here's a state of things. With a passion that's intense, I wish it bad I do But the laws of common sense we got to do ignore If what I say is true, to step to marry you Here's a pretty state of things, here's a pretty how we do Here's a pretty state of things, a pretty state of things Here's a how to do For if what I say is true, I cannot, cannot marry you How did you do?
fine drinking vodka till we go blind, just like Uncle Vanya. Here's a Das Vendanya, here's a Das Vendanya. Hey! 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 distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. That's awfully nice of you, but I'm afraid that's hopeless. Why so? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without yum yum anymore. This afternoon I perform the happy dispatch. No, 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 no. I can't allow that. Why not? Why, hang it all, you are under contract to die with a public executioner. If you're to commit suicide, then what's to become of me? I, I shall have to be executed in your place. Why, 
It would certainly seem so. Huh. <laughs> now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? The Mikado and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. <laughs> the Mikado! He's coming to see whether his orders have been carried out. Now listen here. This is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain, and you really shouldn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honor and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously by the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. What? Now? Certainly, at once. Jump it off! Jump it off! <laughs> My good sir, I don't go prepared to chop a man's head off in a moment's notice. Why, I've never even killed a blue bottle. Look it up, it's in the glossary, folks. Still, as Lord High Executor. My good sir, ow, as ow, Lord High Executor. Ow, ow, ow. Sorry. I've got to kill him in a month. I'm not ready. I don't even know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to start with a guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom until I reach the second trombone. From guinea pig to trombone. That shouldn't take you long, right? <laughs> no offense. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? I don't suppose I've accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I thought the duties would be purely nominal. I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody. Oh! <laughs> Cheer up, poor fellow. We we all have unpleasant duties we must have to discharge at times. I mean. If it doesn't matter to you, or to me, why should it matter to you? <laughs> I mean, remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I kill you when making an affidavit that you've been executed will do just as well? I mean, here are plenty of witnesses. The Lord Chief Justice, the Lord High Admiral, Commander-in-Chief, Secretary of State of the Home Department, and First Lord of the Treasury. And Chief Commissioner of Police. Uh, yes, but, but where are they? <laughs> there they are. <laughs> They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Well, why not? You'll be grossly insulted, as usual. Will this insult be cash, cash down right today? It will be a ready money transaction. Well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good, choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. Ah, ah, ah. Babbly pride, how do you like that, my buck? <laughs> but I tell you, life without yum yum. Oh, yum 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 yum. Bother yum yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. Take yum yum and marry yum yum. Only this time, go away and never come back again. Here she is. That was fast. You think she's in a play waiting for her entrance or something? <laughs> Aren't I? Shush. Yum yum. Are you particularly busy? Not particularly. You have five minutes to spare. Yes. Then go with your grace, the Archbishop of Titipu. He will marry you at once. But. If I'm to be buried alive... You don't ask questions. Just go with Nankipu and he will explain all. But, but one moment, I'm Not for worlds! I think I hear the Mikado coming. And if he finds you alive, I shall find it most difficult in persuading him otherwise. Close uh, for that! Uh, Here it comes! Oh, yeah. 
kind of man obedience I expect. I'm the emperor of Japan. And I'm his daughter, can lie in act. He'll marry his son, he's only got one to his daughter, can lie in act. My morals have been declared particularly correct. But they're nothing at all compared with those of his daughter, can lie in act. Bow, bow to his daughter, can Tenor, whose vocal villainies all desire to shirk, shall during off hours exhibit his powers to man to swords wax work. The lady who dyes a chemical yellow or stains her grey hair puce, or tickles her belly like Mark Pottery with permanent walnut juice. The idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes, we only suffer to ride on a buffer in parliamentary trains. Ah! My object of survive, I shall achieve in time To let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime And make his prisoner pant, unwillingly represent A source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment His object of survive, he will achieve in time To let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime Shall all be extracted by terrified amateurs. The native well ninja who's out on a bit and parties from dawn till dusk must drink fretted sake and three day old maki and two sets ready to pass. The billiard shop, who many would pleasures his rooms extremely hard. He's made to dwell in a dungeon cell, a spot that's always barred. And there he plays extravagant matches and fitless finger stalls on a cloth untrue with a twisted cue and elliptical billiard ball. <laughs> My object of survive, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make it prisoner no hand, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. His object of survive, we will achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime.
Excellency, we bid you a great welcome. Uh, all of your orders have been taken care of, and execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Trust for. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the coroner has just handed me his certificate. I am the coroner. <laughs> and is this the certificate of death? <laughs> At Titipu, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord High Chamberlain, Attorney General, Secretary of State for the Home Department, Lord Mayor, and groom of the second floor front. They were all present, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. Very good house. I wish I'd been there in time for the performance. Yes, uh, it was a terrific scene. A man of gigantic strength. Oh, you really should have been there. Describe it. <laughs> The criminal cried as we dropped him down in a stage of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I burned my pink right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and guggled, I drew my snickered snee. My snickered snee. Oh, never shall I forget the cry or the shriek, the shriek it here. As I gnashed my teeth when from the sheet I drew my snicket snee. We go and well, we can not tell what to upon the stairs. We always try to utter lies and every time he fails. He shivered and shook as he gave the sign for a stroke he didn't deserve. When all of the sudden his eyes met mine and seemed to brace his nerve. For he nodded his head and he kissed his hand and he whistled and there did he. As the saber true cut cleanly through his cervical burden. His vertebrae. When a man is afraid a beautiful maid is a cheering sight to see. That hate was dead, for its order day was he. It stood on its neck with a smile well read, and barked three times to me. It was none of your impudent dwarf and nods, but as humble as could be. For it clearly knew the deference due to a man of pedigree. And it's all I bow, that deadly bow, was a touching sight to see. For drunk as yet, it couldn't forget the deference due to me. This world he always speaks the truth whenever he finds it pays. And in this case, it all took place exactly as he says. Exactly, 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 exactly as he says. Dissatisfied? None whatever. On the contrary, I was going to marry him. Yet he fled. I'm surprised he should have fled from one so lovely. <laughs> That's not true. No. <laughs> you claim that 
that I am not beautiful because my face is plain. But you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn then that it is not in the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. But <laughs> I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. People come miles to see it. And my right elbow has fascination for you can resist. Allow me. It is on you Tuesdays and Fridays on presentation of visiting card. As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. And yet he fled. And is masquerading in this town as a second trombone. A second, a second trombone? trombone? Yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. You're made up. Quite easy. Actually, it's rather difficult. Uh, point of fact, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad! His address. Roselle? I desire to associate myself with an expression of regret. We really haven't the least notion of all. Of course you are, how could you? Don't distress yourself about it. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, <laughs> he must Except the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. No, I'm sure he thoroughly deserved all that he got. We are infinitely obliged, Your Majesty. Much obliged, Your Majesty. Very much obliged, Your Majesty. Obliged? No, please don't mention it. How could you tell? No, of course we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. It might have been written on his pocket handkerchief, but... Japanese don't wear pocket handkerchiefs. Oh. <laughs> 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 My eyeball. <laughs> I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? <laughs> yes, it's something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. <laughs> something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I know it's something humorous, but lingering, with either boiling oil or melted lead. No. <laughs> oh, don't fret. I'm not the least bit angry. But I... <laughs> Your Majesty. We, we really hadn't any idea. I knew nothing about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> well, that's the pathetic part of it, really. See, the fool of an act says, compassing the death of the heir apparent, 
There's not a word about a mistake. No. no. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be. Yes. yes. But there isn't. No. Well, that's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn, I'm afraid. However, cheer up. I'll have it altered. <gasps> Next session! Mm. Now let's see about your executions! <laughs> well, after luncheon, so true, can you wait till then? Uh, yes, yes. Wait till then. we can wait till then. Mm. <sighs> then we'll make it after luncheon. I don't want any lunch. <laughs> I'm really very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust world and virtue is only triumphant in theatrical performances. Speaking of which... <laughs> See how the fates their gifts a lot. For A is happy, B is not. Yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Is B more worthy? I should say he's worth a great deal more than A. Yet A is happy, oh so happy, laughing ha ha, jumping ha ha, nectar quaffing ha ha ha, ever to your serving A, happy undeserving A, ever to your serving A. Should enjoy his happy lot, and they should die in misery. That is he the soup, me I am B. But should A perish, that should be. Of course, assuming I am B. B should be happy, oh so happy, laughing ha ha, jumping ha ha, nectar quaffing ha ha ha, but condemned to die in sleep. But condemned to die in his sleep, rest in meritorious Well, a nice mess you've gotten us into with your deference due to a man of pedigree. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bold and unconvincing narrative. Corroborative detail, corroborative fiddlesticks! <laughs> oh, and you're just as bad as he is with your pop and bowl stories about a whistling air. Oh, but that's so like you. You must put in your all. Well, how about your big right arm? Yes, and your snicker <laughs> Well, never mind that now. There's only one thing to be done. Mankey Poo must come alive once again. Here he comes. Mankey Poo, I have great news for you. You've been reprieved. Oh, but it's too late now. I'm a dead man. I'm on my honeymoon. <laughs> oh, nonsense. A terrible thing has just happened. It seems that you are the son of the Mikado. Why, why, yes, but that happened some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> is this time for early persiflage? Your father is here, and with Katisha. My father? And with Katisha? Yes, he wants you particularly. So does she. <laughs> He's married now. But bless my heart, what does that have to do with it? <laughs> I don't have a line. <laughs> Katisha claims me in marriage, but I'm married already. Consequently, she will insist upon my execution. And if I'm executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see our difficulty, don't you? Yes, I don't know what's to be done. <laughs> There's still a chance for you. If you could persuade Katisha to marry you, she would have no further claim on me. And in that case, I could come to life without any fear of being put to death. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I marry Katisha. I really think it's the only cause. My good girl, have you seen her? <laughs> she is something appalling. Ah, that's only her face. <laughs> she has a left elbow which people come miles to see. I'm told that her right heel is much admired by connoisseurs. <laughs> My good sir, I decline to pin my heart upon any lady's right heel. It, it comes to this. When Katisha is single, I prefer to be a disembodied spirit. When Katisha is married, things become as welcome as flowers in spring. <laughs> oh, another song. The flowers that bloom in the spring shall love we promise of mad sunshine. As we madly dance and we sing, shall love we welcome the hope that they bring. Shall love the summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that I sing, oh, father, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la. The flowers that bloom in the spring, cha la, have nothing to do with the case. For I've got to take under my wing, cha la, a most unattractive old thing, cha la, with a character short of a face, with a character short of a face. <laughs> and that's what I mean when I say or I sing, oh, bother the flowers that bloom in the spring. Cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la, oh bother the flowers of spring. Cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la, cha la 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 la.
Katusha! The miscreant who robbed me of my love! But vengeance pursues. They are heating the cauldron. Katusha, behold a suppliant at your feet. Katusha, mercy! Mercy? Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. <laughs> Only the educated parrot can appreciate me. I was educating his parrot when he left me. Well, he is dead. And where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through that weary round again? And at the same time implore mercy on you? You who robbed me of my prey! I mean my pupil. <laughs> Just as his education was on the point of completion? Oh, where shall I find another? Here! <laughs> what? Catacher. For years I have loved you with a white-hot passion that is slowly but surely consuming my very vitals. I'll thank you to keep your vitals to yourself. <laughs> ah, shrink not from me. If there is aught of a woman's mercy in your heart, turn not away from a lovesick suppliant whose very fibers thrills at the tiniest touch. Kadisha, I dare not hope for your love but I will not live without it, darling. You, who still reek of the blood of my betrothed, dare address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. I do. Accept my love, or I perish on the spot. Go to. Who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? You know not what you say. Listen. On a tree by your river, a little top did sing we know, did we know, did we know? And I said to him, did he but why do you sit? Sing we know, did we know, did we know? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie? I cried, or rather tumble? I know little inside. At the poor little shake of his head, he replied, Oh, we know, did we know, did we know? He slapped at his chest as he sat on the bow, saying, We know, did we know, did we know? And the cold perspiration bespangled his brow, Oh, we know, did we know, did we know? He sobbed and he sighed, and a gurgle he gave as he plunged himself into the pillowy wave. And an echo arose from the suicide's grave. Oh, we know, did we know, did we know? Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that in my name. Is it below? Did we know? Did we know? That was blighted affection that made him exhale. Oh, we know? Did we know? Did we know? And if you remain callous, an obdurate eye shall perish as he did, and you will know why. Though I probably shall not explain as I die. Oh, we know? Did we know? Intimately. Did you? Oh, he must have been very fond of her. His devotion was something extraordinary. Oh, poor little 
poor chap. And if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once. No, no, you mustn't. Anything but that. Oh, I am a silly little goose. Ah. <laughs> you are. And you won't hate me because I'm just a tipsy, wincy bit bloodthirsty. Will you? Oh, cut it up. <laughs> Is there no beauty even in bloodthirstiness? My idea exactly! <laughs> there is beauty in the bellow of the blast. There is grandeur in the growling of the gale. There is eloquent appalling when the lions are roaring and the tiger is the lashing of his tail. Yes, I'd like to see a tiger from the Congo of Naga and especially the gnashing of his tail. Volcanoes have a splendor that is grim, and the earthquakes only terrify the dolls. But to he who's scientific, there is something that's terrific in the falling of the flying thunderbolts. Yes, in spite of all my meekness, if I have a certain weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. The earth is so sick, and I'll tell you it's heaven, it's very ugly, so but away we go. Interesting, the baby not the man who is tough. Oh, well, this white opinion is the general opinion that she lasts a little deal longer when she's tough. I want that man to think. Won't you wait until you're 80 in the shade? There's a fascination dragon in the room, and that's a matter to you. If you are sufficiently detained. To oh, the matter that you mention, I have given some attention, and I think I am sufficiently decayed. If that is so sick and I'm done, it's everything's bad.
Your Majesty, it is true that I had stated I had killed Nanki Poo. Yes, with most effective okay. particulars. Okay. Any corroborative detail intended to give autistic verisimilitude to an otherwise. Will bad. you refrain from putting in your all? <laughs> your Majesty, it's like this. When Your Majesty says, let a thing be done, it's as good as done. Well, practically, it is done, because Your Majesty's will is law. When Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman, and a gentleman is told not to be killed. Consequently, <laughs> he is dead. Well, practically he is dead. A and if he's dead, then why not say so? I... Nothing could possibly be more satisfactory. <laughs> oh.
Pitcher, 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 Pitc